tried figuring out what you should be investing in and just had no idea where you should get started. Trying to find the right investment can ruin your life. You can potentially waste hours of your time and lose all of your money if you don't put your hard earned cash in the right place. This video will show you the three best investments that anyone can make, how you can use each of these to minimize risk and go over my three part system to figure out which investment is the best for you based on how much experience you have and all you need to get started is just $20. So firstly, taking a look at the returns that you can make. Knowing how much money you can get or expect to receive from an investment is a very important skill and it helps you to know where you should be focusing your time and attention. The very first thing that I invested in was an ETF that tracked the S&P 500. Now at the time I was reading a lot of investing books, particularly The Intelligent Investor and I was also listening to a lot of the information that Warren Buffett was providing. He's one of the biggest investors in the world with a net worth of over $120 billion. And if he was always recommending this type of investment, I thought that I should give it a try. So this was in 2020 and I was just plowing all of my extra money that I had into the S&P 500. And basically what it is, it's just a collection of the 500 biggest companies in the American stock market. So think of brands like Disney, Coca-Cola, Amazon, Google, and the list goes on. Pretty much every major company that you can think of is listed in this index. Now the returns you can get from this are on average 10% per year. Now that's across a 10, 20 or 30 year period. It's not meaning that every single year you'll get exactly 10%. Some years it can do better. You might get 15, 20 or 25%, but but other years it might just move sideways and do nothing at all or it can also drop in value. Keep in mind it can be better to be a bit more conservative with this investment and say that it goes up 8% per year because of variables like inflation. So 8% might not sound like much. So what does it actually mean? It just means that every nine years, your money is going to double in value. So if we take a look at a practical example of this, if you started investing into the S&P 500 when you were 25 and continue to the age of 65 and if you put in $5,000 per year at the end of it you would have $1.29 million. In comparison to just saving that money in cash and stuffing it under your mattress you'd only have $200,000. But there's one big problem with this. You have to wait 40 years to get a really big return. Some people might be happy with that. This 8% return is definitely far better than what you would have with a savings account with a bank which is normally about two maybe three percent so you're getting almost four times the value from the S&P 500 but what if you want to get money a little bit quicker and you don't want to be rich when you're retired so that's the same opinion that I had I thought there must be something where I can get a better return a little bit quicker and around the beginning of 2020 there was one stock that was absolutely crushing the market and blowing the returns that you could get from the standard S&P 500 investment out of the water and that was Tesla. I was on the fence about investing into this for quite a while. Many people were saying that the increase in price was just hype and there was no reason for it to continue but finally in August of 2020 I made my first investment and you can see the screenshot. I invested twice and put in a total of about $700 in the beginning and Tesla from the beginning of 2020 to the end of 2020 21 had an insane run. It went up over 1100% and at the same time that Tesla was having this great run, there was something else very special happening in the crypto market. At the beginning of 2020, Bitcoin was going to have a great performance and go up over 550%. But at the time, I made a really big mistake and I wasn't paying attention to the crypto market. All my attention was focused on stocks and specifically Tesla. I could have made a lot more money if I was more open 
open-minded and kept an eye out for other types of investments. So through the middle to end portion of 2020, I just put all of the spare cash I had into Tesla. I was selling out of other investments like Facebook and reinvesting all of that into Tesla stock. So I held Tesla for about a year. I sold at the end of August in 2021 and I had about a 65% return at the time. Personally, I was really happy with this. It was way better than the 8% return I was getting with the S&P 500. But after I sold Tesla, it went up 60% and that still hurts to this day because that could have made a lot of money for me if I had held on. But you can't be mad if you make a 68% return. It's always gonna be something positive. But now in 2024, Tesla hasn't really done too much since it's had the big run through 2020 and 2021. It's down about 50% since its peak and it hasn't really picked up much since then. And that's always the thing when you buy into a really popular investment that has a lot of hype and interest around it. You don't know how long that run will last and you don't know if you're gonna buy at the middle, the bottom, the top and you might buy it when it's peak and then it might drop straight away despite months or even a year prior to that it just consistently going up no matter what so keep in mind that it is a good risk versus reward but you do need to do your research know what you're investing in and don't just follow everyone because you think that they know what they're doing you have to know as well personally that you're making a good investment and you understand where your money is going so personally, I think that stocks are a great place to get started for anyone, and it's where I first got into the investing space. Once I moved out of the stock market, I got into property. So I sold all of my Tesla stock and everything I had in the S&P 500 to help pay for a deposit on my first home. Now personally, when it comes to the return from a rental property, I personally haven't had the greatest run from it. I have to top up my rental for the insurance insurance and the rates. So at the end of each week, I am not net positive on my rental property. And then there's also the costs of repair and maintenance. And also there were some renovations that had to be done to get the property up to scratch and ready to be rented out to someone. So on my end, I don't think that a rental property is the greatest place to start. Yes, you can build up equity with a bank. You can use one property as leverage to get a loan for another. But in my experience, it just takes so long to get enough money for the rental. And then there's a lot of extra costs besides just paying off the mortgage that go into holding on to that property. So as Tesla started to lose momentum, I also wanted to get back into investing as well after buying the property. So I wanted to get into the crypto market. I saw that it was doing really well and it was piquing my interest and I thought I've given stocks a try property, now let me try out some crypto. So the first investment that I made, I bought six Solana in September of 2021. So as I looked into crypto, I found out about something called the Bitcoin halving. And this is essentially where the mining reward for mining Bitcoin gets cut in half. Essentially, the supply is reduced and there's still a high demand, so the price of it goes up. So this happens every four years and historically it always yields a really good return for crypto that in turn has a really big pump or increase in price sometime after the halving cycle begins. And then because Bitcoin is the anchor for the crypto market, all other cryptocurrencies tend to have a really big jump in price. So this has been happening since 2012. At that time, Bitcoin was just worth about $12. One year later, after the halving cycle, it went up to $964. The second halving cycle happened in July of 2016, about a year and a half after that. Bitcoin went up over 2000 800% from $657 to over $19,000 at the end of that one and a half year period. And then the third halving cycle in May of 2020, Bitcoin went up over 540% in about 10 to 12 months. And that is the halving cycle that I missed out on and I could have been a part of. But normally after these halving events, about 10 to 18 months following, then there's normally a 70 to 80% drop. So there's a huge run and then it crashes and loses most of its value. So the next halving cycle I saw was coming up in April of 2024. So in January of 2023, I made sure to double down on crypto and I bought about 60 Solana. And since that purchase, Bitcoin has gone up 260%. 
I haven't been able to hold on to all of that Solana that I initially bought, but I do have a fair bit of it still left over. So overall, crypto has given me the best return out of the three investment types in terms of the S&P 500, a safe stock market investment, Tesla stock, property, crypto has been the winner for me. And crypto can be a really good place for Kiwis or anyone to get into investing. It doesn't take a lot of money to initially get started. A consumer research report looking at Kiwis' opinions into investing showed that 16% of Kiwis felt comfortable investing small amounts of money into real estate versus 58% felt confident into investing into cryptocurrency. This really shows that the general population is warming up to the idea of investing into crypto. But there can also be a few barriers with crypto as well. With 67% of people surveyed in the study showed that they didn't feel confident in understanding the information related to the cryptocurrency space. And if you're someone who wants to start investing on a local Kiwi exchange, then make sure to check out Easy Crypto. I've got an affiliate link in the description box if you want to sign up to their platform. They have some great features, some very cheap and competitive fees and their own native wallet that provides excellent security. So make sure to check them out if you're interested in starting your crypto investing journey. So what about your experience level and risk tolerance? What should you be investing in out of these three different options? So investing can be a little bit like going to the gym. If when you first go, someone tells you that you have to weigh out every single piece of food you eat, you have to go to the gym seven days a week, train four hours a day, take three different weight loss supplements, just to even get started, you wouldn't even be interested. You would just think that's far too much info, that's far too much effort on my end, I'm not even gonna get started. Versus if someone just told you you had to go to the gym twice a week for 15 minutes and walk on the treadmill and that's all you needed to do just to begin. If that was the case, everything would be nice and easy and you wouldn't really have a problem with getting into the gym. So investing can be quite similar to this. People can overcomplicate it, they can throw around lots of jargon terms like PE ratio, dollar cost averaging, ETF, index fund. So the most straightforward way to begin is typically with the S&P 500. It's a nice diversified index, it's safe, it gives you a consistent return. It's a little bit like walking on the treadmill twice a week for 15 minutes. It's gonna be something reliable that's not complicated and it's an easy place to begin. This is where you can just start with say 20 dollars a week. Just put in a set amount every week into the S&P 500, let that grow and compound over time and as you get more confidence and more experience you can start investing more money. You might start with $20, go to 50, 100, 200 per week, whatever you can afford but just to get used to the process. Now you're not going to become a millionaire overnight or make a huge return in a short space of time with this. It's going to grow and compound and be beneficial in the long run across decades but that's the same way that walking on a treadmill twice a week isn't going to make you look like Arnie or professional bodybuilder. Now, if you want to branch out with the stock market, going with a more popular type of investment that might have a lot of hype around it and can have a really good run is a nice way where you can branch out a bit more if you like. So in 2020, Tesla was the hot stock. Now it's NVIDIA that's gone up about 700% in just one year. But with these, what goes up must come down down. So think of these types of investments a little bit like the workout where you're doing all the training hours at a time every single day per week. That might give you some good results. You might get stronger and bigger a bit quicker but do that too long and you will get injured and you will likely get hurt and you'll just burn out. So same with these really high growth type stocks. They do have a really good run. They can be good for a while but eventually they do tend to come down and they come down pretty hard. They might lose 50% plus of their value. Crypto is a bit like this as well. If you do enough research and do things the right way and know when to invest in line with these halving cycles, it can increase your chances of having a good return, being able to make a profit and being able to get out and sell without having a big drop in your portfolio. So all the info in this video can be completely useless if you don't know one important step. You have to actually know where to buy your investments from. You need to know the right platform that 
won't charge you an arm and a leg in fees, will have access to the best features and the best types of investments as well. Security is also massive. Some exchanges like FTX and Celsius have gone bankrupt. If you want to know the best place to actually buy these investments from, then make sure to check out this video on screen.